Welcome to Spine Academy. In this video, we're going to review cervical alignment and instability. This is an excerpt from a broader course on cervical spondylosis, which is age-related degeneration of the cervical spine. If you're interested in seeing the full course, we've left a link in the description. So now that we've spoken about the different features of cervical spondylosis, we'll talk a little bit about how it all comes together in the cervical spine when we look at it overall. Now, if you look at the cervical spine from the front, it looks like this. It should be pretty straight. This is a normal cervical spine, kind of a picture from the front. And this is a picture of a normal cervical spine looking at it from the side. From the side, the cervical spine should have a bit of a curvature backwards, what's called lordosis, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go forward. Now, when we think about cervical alignment, what we are talking about is the overall shape of the cervical spine when we look at it on the whole. We're not looking necessarily at just 4.5 or just 5.6. We're saying, what is the cervical spine's shape or overall architecture when people are standing up, looking forward in a neutral position? So this is not, obviously when people lean back or they lean forward, their neck position will change. But if you just tell someone to look straight ahead and characterize what their neck architecture or shape looks like, that is what we're looking at when we talk about alignment. So cervical alignment refers to the overall position or the overall shape of the vertebral bodies and the curvature of the cervical spine in a neutral position. So here you can see kind of a nice normal architecture. And then on this person, you can kind of see as the discs degenerate, they lose that curvature. So if you look at a line that goes straight down the middle of the vertebral bodies, that curvature is called lordosis. So this is a curve that looks kind of like this. So this is a curve kind of backwards like that. That is called lordosis. Now, if you look at the same curve over here, this is called kyphosis. So in this picture here, you can see that the spinal column has lost its normal shape, and at the bottom, it's even leaning, leaning forward a little bit. Now, we call that condition kyphosis. So lordosis and kyphosis are opposites. When we refer to, to people that are slowly losing their lordosis, people will say loss of lordosis or reversal of lordosis. On some occasion, they will even say kyphosis. Now, kyphosis comes in different grades. Even lordosis comes in different grades. That last case we saw had kind of a mild kyphotic deformity. Here, when you look at it, people have a more severe kyphosis or a more severe kyphotic deformity, where if you draw a line, it's more pronounced that this person's neck is leaning forward. Even though they're looking straight ahead, they're neutral, their neck is kind of pushed forward. And there's this old saying in spine surgery that aging is kyphogenic, which means that aging makes people kyphotic over time. Now, if you really want to understand overall what someone's cervical shape or architecture looks like, we typically will get flexion and extension x-rays, or what's called dynamic imaging. That allows you to see what people's spine looks like when they lean all the way back and all the way forward. And it gives you a sense of what their dynamic range is, like what their total range of motion is. Also gives you a sense of what the shape of their spine is in extreme conditions. So if you look at this person leaning back, this person's looking high as, as much as they can, their spine is still kyphotic. It's still kind of leaning forward here. When they lean forward, it's more pronounced. So dynamic images are really images that are obtained in a neutral, upright position, but also with flexion and extension maximally to understand what people's total range of motion is. It's usually done with x-rays, although there are some techniques for getting MRIs, and on some occasions we'll get dynamic MRI imaging as well. Extension and flexion positions kind of maximally, those are the extremes, and that gives you a sense of what someone's total cervical range of motion looks like. Now, one of the things this animation really shows, or this illustration shows, is that when this person leans back, for example, like you can see there's a little bit of slipping of some of the bones, but when they lean forward, you can see, for example, C4 really slips forward on C5 there. We call that cervical instability. So when they lean back, it kind of reduces almost back to normal again. When they lean forward, it slips forward. That's not normal. People's spine is not supposed to slip like that. Now, thankfully, that is not something that we see that often, but we get flexion extension x-rays on most patients that we evaluate. Like when I evaluate patients for cervical pathology, I get those as a matter of routine to understand their alignment and to look for instability. But cervical instability is when one vertebral body slips on top of the one below with motion, with leaning forward and leaning back. 
It's usually a consequence of the ligaments being weak, that they're a little bit sloppy and they're permitting a bit too much motion. It does also typically have some joint arthritis that goes with it because the joints usually don't permit that. They usually restrict motion as well. But usually when people have instability, it's a byproduct of the ligaments being a little lax and the joints not working right and permitting abnormal motion at that level. When people have instability, one of the terms you'll sometimes see is spondylolisthesis, which we use a lot more commonly in the lumbar spine. We see it a lot more commonly in the lumbar spine, but it can be seen in the cervical spine. And the term that people will use, radiologists will use frequently, will be spondylolisthesis. What that really implies is that one bone is slipping on top of the other. Now, if one bone is slipping forward, we call that antrolisthesis. That's what that term means in case you see it. And if it's slipping backwards, it's called retrolisthesis. It's nothing to be alarmed about. I just wanted you to be familiar familiar with those terms in case, in case you see it uh, on an MRI report or an x-ray report or something like that. Now, when we talk about alignment overall then, there are a few important concepts. One, we look at alignment on, I look at them on all patients when we're doing the cervical thing, uh, cervical evaluation, because we want to understand what people's neutral position looks like and also what they look like with maximal flexion and extension to get a sense of what the range of motion is. As the spine ages, people lose lordosis. So you don't, it's one of those things that also goes away. People are born with beautiful curvature in their neck and then over time they slowly become kind of more and more pitched forward. And that's common and it will affect many levels in the, in the spine, not only the cervical, but even in the lumbar spine, people lose lordosis. Um, kyphosis in the neck can contribute to neck pain and sometimes neurological dysfunction. We try really to kind of manage neck pain with conservative physical therapy, sometimes injections, things like that, but we want to understand the root causes and sometimes kyphosis can contribute to neck pain. When we change gears and talk about instability again, instability is again a fairly uncommon thing to encounter. Uh, it can only really be evaluated with dynamic imaging. So if you just got an MRI and somebody says retrolisthesis on it, it's not really fair. You really wanna see what flexion and extension x-rays show before labeling something like that. Um, instability can be a source of neck pain. We see it much more often. Probably the situation where I see it the most is in people with rheumatoid disease or rheumatoid arthritis where it's a destructive arthropathy and people develop some instability with that. So it can be a source of neck pain in those situations, but that's what the x-rays are really good for looking at. Um, and it can contribute to spinal cord and spinal nerve compression that changes. And it's really postural. It might be that when somebody leans forward that they have more pressure on their spinal cord and they lean back and they have less or vice versa, depending on the circumstances and the ligament hypertrophy and stuff. But that's what we're really evaluating with these flexion and extension x-rays. So overall, when we want to look at the cervical spine, we think about all of the degeneration that affects the different pieces of the cervical spine, but looking at the alignment and evaluating for stability is important from the 100-foot view to kind of get a sense of what's happening with someone's cervical spine overall. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future content, we'd welcome them in the comment section below.